Hello, this is your boy Nathan here, and you're watching Robot Masters. I got two hot robot batteries, the Roblox S6 and the Lambot A1. Just got this guy. What's unique to the Lambot A1 is it has a sonar sensor, and this guy uses an infrared sensor. Can the sonar sensor detect black objects? Can it detect glass? Well, go ahead and check it out in this video. This is an ultimate navigation test between the two robot vacuums. And, of course, stay tuned towards the end because I got a special navigation test that's extremely hard and only one robot vacuum was able to complete it successfully. Okay, let's go get started. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite types of testing I do on Robot Master's channel. I do love algorithms and navigations. Back in high school, I used to work on robotics, and I did APAT planning. I did left-hand rule planning, all different types of algorithms, and I do know how hard it is to program a robot vacuum to create a very efficient algorithm, and the Roblox S6 is no exception. So this first challenge is considered the control. Both robot vacuums can easily see the fluffy bright pillows. Also, the navigation on both robot vacuums are very well optimized. They choose the shortest path possible and they can navigate around these objects without bumping into them. Okay, so both robots have their maps cleared each time I run them, so they don't memorize the objects. This is real-time path planning. They see the object, they determine how to go about around the object, and they do a really good job moving around the objects without bumping into them. Also, it helps that the LiDAR sensor can pick up the objects, so it allows the algorithm to create the best possible path. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do round two. I place smaller objects. So let's see if these LiDAR sensors can pick it up and the sonar sensor on the Lambot can pick up these objects or the infrared sensor on the Roborock S6 can pick up these smaller objects. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Lambot A1. It has a really large battery, similar to what the Roborock S5 and S6 have. It's at 5200 milliamp hours and apparently it can go run up to 3 hours on a single charge, covering up around 3,000 square feet. Okay, so like with all my smart robot vacuums, I did an initial training one, basically allowing the robot to start from its charging station, and then clean the entire house, and then return back to its charging station. So this allowed the robot to create a full map of my house. One thing to note is it did lose one of its side brush next to my area rug, and it did get stuck. Luckily, I was at work, I told the app, okay, let's try again. Now, the Lambot A1 decided to get cute and try to avoid all these objects. Well, wait one second, because trying to take a shortcut doesn't always work. Look at that. There's a bunch of chairs over there, and the Lambot had to struggle to find its charging base. Okay, guys, what can I say about the Roborock S6? You guys all know about it. You guys know a lot about it, probably more than what I know about the Roborock S6. I did own the Roborock S5, I love that guy, and now the S6 with its 20% more efficient cleaning algorithms, a faster processor, it's basically a slight upgrade over its younger brother. 
Okay, let's talk about the physical upgrades that the Roblox S6 has over the Roblox S5. First, the bristle design is 250% denser, meaning there's 250% more bristles than on the S5. Also, it has a new silicone-based side brush sweeper, so we'll see how well that does. I will do a head-to-head -head challenge on the side brush. The machine is 50% quieter, which is very noticeable. I do run this guy at night on max power and hardly can hear it. And a lot of the parts are interchangeable. You can interchange the dustbin, you can interchange the filter, the side brush, the extractors, and you can also interchange the disposable mopping pads, which is new to the Roborock S6. So guys, if you're looking for a really good robot vacuum, a very reliable cleaner, do not hesitate to look into the Roborock S5 or the Roborock S6. I think the price points are really good. $400 for the S5 is a steal. Sometimes you can get them cheaper. And yes, the $600 price point for the S6 is a little pricey. But if you compare that to the Roombas, I think a lot of people will shoot for the Roborock series. Okay, I need to up the challenge because both these robot vacuums make it look easy. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Can the Roborock LiDAR sensor see black objects? I know that clear objects make the LiDAR sensor confused, and it looks like the Roborock cannot see this black object. It bumps into it slightly, but it doesn't navigate around the object without touching it. So that verifies that the Roborock S6 cannot see the actual object with the LiDAR sensor, but it relies on its other sensors like its front bumper to kind of gently navigate around the object. Now, I did do this with the Roomba S9, and I did notice that if the object's black, the front 3D sensor does technically detect it, but it doesn't detect it as far as away. So what that means is the robot will run into it and then quickly slow down at the very last second. But unfortunately, it doesn't have enough time to slow down, so it bumps into the black object harder than if it would bump into a colored object. So that's the only difference with the black object on the Roomba S9 is it will bump into it slightly harder because it doesn't have enough time to slow down. So, these water bottles and glass objects are very hard for the LiDAR sensor to pick up. And you notice that it kind of sees it, but not really. Um, there's a lot of blind spots on both robot vacuums in front of the bumper. So if the sensor isn't completely lined up to the object, then it won't see it and kind of bump into them and push them around. The Rubble Rock does a very good job just kind of feeling its way around, even though it can't technically see it with its LiDAR sensor. I think the Rubble Rock series are gentle cleaners. They don't run into them as hard as like the Roomba S9. So if you're worried about your furniture, go with the Needle D7 or the Rubble Rocks. I think they do an excellent job respecting your furniture. Now you may notice a lineup of robot vacuums. I know the manuals say to leave three to four feet on either side, but that's not the case. I do kind of keep my robot vacuums in one area. I kind of think of them as like little pets. They like to be next to each other and they have no problem docking up and finding their chargers. I have ran, I believe, 10 robots at the same time and all 10 were able to go out, clean, and then return back to their respecting charger stations. So the sonar sensor does detect the black object and slow the robot vacuum down. So unfortunately there's only one sonar sensor in the front of the robot vacuum. I wish they placed it all along the bumper, kind of like on the VR2000 and VR3000 series. I will try to get my hands on that robot vacuum, but it's very expensive. I believe it's $1,500 for those vacuums. So it looks like the... Sonar sensor can't detect the glasses, but it might be able to detect the water bottles. But then again, since the pickup range is so narrow, it does have a hard time tracking multiple bottles.
Okay, so it looks like both robots did struggle on detecting the glass objects and the water bottles. The Lambot A1 was able to detect the black object. I just love you guys. So when I uploaded the unboxing of the Lambot A1, one of you commenters said that you thought my title said Lambot. Well, that was pretty funny. Also, one of you commented said that you didn't like the end of the robot back. You thought the real end was ugly. Well, poor Lambot. You know, not every robot vacuum can look like the Dyson Heroes or the LG Core Zero R9. But hopefully, this ugly robot vacuum can perform better. Okay, are you guys still here? Well, here's the bonus round. This is a little thank you for sticking with my entire video. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest challenges I've done on Robot Masters. Uh, basically, I put a bunch of chair legs down and they're very narrow, doesn't provide much room for error. And we'll see how well these robot vacuums can navigate the chair legs. This isn't all about navigation, this is more about precision and how accurate it can get itself in between small spaces. So if you like these types of videos, please smash the like button. Helps me gauge if this video is popular or not. Also, I will be going back into mopping robots fairly soon. I am trying to come up with some good tests for you guys. I do love extreme testing and I got some great feedback. One of you suggested I put some dried up mud on the ground. Another you wanted me to smear butter, mayonnaise, and other substances and see how well both the Brava M6 and the Brava 240 can do and I'm definitely going to get around to it. I just have to get some time to go ahead and uh, film those. So it looks like the Lambot's in a pickle and it finally gives up and goes back home. Okay Roborock S6, it's your time to shine. Are you really that smart or are you just faking it? Let's see. Well, so far so good. This is the hardest challenge yet. Trying to get in between the very tight chair leg of my daughter's stool. Uh, she's three and a half and she has a very small chair, which I used in my last testings of the Skittle challenge. Um, why I chose this chair is because a lot of the D-shaped robot vacuums got hung up. We'll see how well this round-shaped Roborock S6 armed with a quad-core processor can do. Keep in mind that it has to go in between the two chair legs to keep moving on and it only leaves about a few millimeters on each side so it does require a lot of accuracy and precision. Okay, so all you science people out there, I just use accuracy and precision in the same sentence. I know that they're two different things, I do apologize, so don't hate me for that one. So, what I like about both the robot vacuums, the, both the Lambot and the S6 is they don't like to give up easily. They will keep trying for at least a few minutes to try to get to the area. Well, it looks like the Roborock S6 is home free. It was able to get to its target point. Now, let's see how well it can go back to its charger. So, is this dumb luck or can the Roborock S6 perform that same maneuver twice? Well, go ahead and find out. Anyways, let me know down in the comments what your favorite robot vacuum design is. Do you like the Dyson Heroes? Do you like the flat hockey puck style? Or do you like the D-shaped? My favorite is the Dyson Heroes. It has a very cool paint color. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan and this is Robot Masters. This channel provides daily uploads of cool robot vacuums. I do a lot of crazy testings, 25 pound bag of rice. I do Skittles. I have teddy bears. I ride Barbie cars. I do funny videos, sad videos, unboxings, you name it. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Enjoy, be safe out there and see you guys next time.